Hi guys, welcome back. We've uh, just decided to come live tonight and do a follow-up on today's Tuesday intuition chat with myself and Roz. For those that joined us this morning, we were talking about grief and what happens after the passing with spirit side of it. Say so, hi, Roz. Yeah. Welcome. Hi, Leanne. Today. <laughs> hi, everyone. Those that are viewing Beautiful. and going to view and record version, etc. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And please feel free to share and invite your friends and family to to join in. So at this stage, we may not do any live readings, but we'd like you to join in in the conversation. Let us know your experiences and how you feel. Um, we had a lovely lady by the memory, her name was Vanessa this morning, that um, we touched a little bit and helped her understand um, around the passing of her brother that was murdered with that side of it. So, mm. hi, Pam. Beautiful. The comments are working tonight. And we've got Bonnie and saying yes. hi, ladies. Yes, and even I can uh, see them in the background at the back end of it, the comments, <laughs> just what you're posting yeah. up there, Leanne. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, excellent. So, well, that's good. It's it's working. No uh, little glitches yet, as yet. Mm. So, we've had some fun the last couple of days with um, the Be Live and Facebook changing and stuff like that. So, hopefully tonight it will go well. But mm. um, basically, Ros and I sort of only managed to get about half an hour show in today due to other things popping up. But we did speak about grief and how it affects us. Ros um, unfortunately lost a dear friend in the last week or so. I've had a couple of people around me in the last um, couple of weeks that have lost loved ones, whether a grandfather or a father figure in their lives as well. So we thought it was a perfect way to, or a perfect time to actually talk about grief, how we handle it, how spirit, um, what happens when they pass over. So did you want to give a little rundown, Roz, on sort of, you know, how we kicked off this morning? And we can pick up from there. Yes, it's almost a long time ago <laughs> since this morning. <laughs> we got a lot um, done in that time. <laughs> we did. I mean, we were covering a bit the, the different stages but not really being specific around what different stages there are around grief because it really does affect people differently uh, and it can involve the anger, the, the um, you know, that terrible um, sadness and it can lead to depression and other emotions that you really probably could be surprised about honestly and the different and I can't remember what the stages are I know I've done it way back and we did yeah. briefly go through that this morning and yeah. really the that the fact that we are only a soul a spirit that's borrowing this body and this side of a life that we're learning experiences from but really that actually and this is my own personal feeling is that we are actually um home is the other side we've come here to visit yeah. in our body form and home's the other side and uh, i think we even briefly mentioned the soul contracts as well so it was a bit of a progression along that line you know as far as yeah. death doesn't mean we've died yeah, that's it. And life mm. does go on after, you know, after our passing as well. So we just got, one, oops, Natasha's saying hi. It clicked. It moved <laughs> as I clicked on it. Yeah. Bonnie says, yeah, fingers crossed. I did watch this morning. Excellent, Bonnie. Lovely. I'm mm. pleased you could join in. I can see a few people commenting on my Facebook page as well. Guys, we are coming through My Time TV dot live tonight so you can welcome to jump over to that page and watch us live on there um through the broadcast and actually be able to comment so that we mm. can see your comments with that i do have my facebook page open so i may read out some um messages from there as well and kelly says hello um amanda we, at the moment we're not actually going to do readings tonight you can catch me live tomorrow night at the same time where i will do readings but tonight we really wanted to um, follow on from this morning's conversation where we were talking about grief um, from our views of what spirit shows us after a passing and whatnot with that side of it. So Pam just says, experience, uh, experience great loss, my brother to cancer and sister due to 
burn suffering in a home fire. Oh, honey, I send up my love mm. and my heal and healing to you, honey, um, with that side of it. But, you know, there's so many different things. And I think we, in grief, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves and expect a certain thing where I don't think there is a right or a wrong way to grieve. Ros, you might have a bit more idea, uh, input on that. But I just mm. think we need to do what it is that we need to do in our own way sort of thing with that. Ros, you've yeah. lost your parents in the last 12 months or so. Um, yes. So that may be something that sort of resonates a little bit more with you at the moment. Yeah. It does. Uh, each one of them, as uh, Dad passed, that was just over the year ago now, the anniversary of that was on the 7th, I think, of August. And wow. uh, the, there was at least some sort of lead time into that because he was very ill for a bit of time and discovered, yes, there was a cancer there and he did die fairly quickly from that in the end. Um uh, so that was a little bit more of a preparedness, but it still doesn't prepare you for that deep sorrow and the, the missing them. Um, mm. And mum, I was caring for mum straight away afterwards pretty much. So uh, the the process for me, I feel, was actually delayed until mum had actually passed because there was that daily care that you can't sort of spend yeah. the time you really could do and watching and caring for her in her grief. So it was a little bit different, I suppose, to the average, but it's still everyone's experience is going to be different. And, yeah. you know, what timeline? Just don't put a timeline on it. Um, That's it. Did you want me to read that one? Yeah, again? actually, Ross has um, come across something which is absolutely fitting for today's mm -hmm. subject sort of thing. So Ros is going to just read that out for us. And just take note, it may resonate with you. It's just a little card that I found sitting on my desk just above. Um, I hadn't really looked at it. I probably did read it just after Dad died. And it's called Death is Just an Open Door. Death is just an open door. I have only slipped away into the next room. I am I and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak to me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference in your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effort, effect, <laughs> without the trace of a shadow on it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is unbroken continuity. Why should I be out of mind because I'm also out of sight? I'm waiting for you for an interval, somewhere very near, safe and secure. All is well. And that for me, as I glanced up and looked at it, I thought, oh, wow. Like we do sometimes need to be reminded they are just with us all the yeah. time. And yeah. that's the thing. So we've got Felicity saying, hello, beautiful ladies. She's sending her love. Um, and Kelly is on my Facebook. She says, I had delayed grief over my nan years ago. I never cried when she died, but two weeks later I couldn't stop. And that's the thing. I think there's times in grief where we find something to focus on and we're in that moment trying to be strong for everybody else or throwing ourselves into other things so we're not thinking. And it does. It catches up with us. And, you know, we need to take that time out to acknowledge our connection with that person and how we feel, not how somebody else portrays that we should feel sort of thing with that. And like yeah. Roz just said, you know, the physical is gone, what I call the vessel, but their spirit, their energy is still very much around us. And for for people like myself and Roz are very fortunate that we can feel that and see that. We've all got the ability to do it. It's about honing in our senses allowing ourselves to feel that and sometimes that grief can block those signs so i want to say you know for those that are missing a loved one clear your mind and take that moment to take that deep breath and just 
allow yourself to connect with them, to feel them around you because they are very much around us. They find ways. Uh, Bonnie is just saying, uh, that's just beautiful, Roz. Thank you. Excellent, well, thank Bonnie. You, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's just very fitting the way that it was, and this is probably Spirit doing this as well, the way it was put in front of Roz today after this morning's um, short broadcast that we, we did sort of thing. And that is how spirit will work. They will put things in front of you, whether it's the feathers, the music um, and different things like that, the memories as well. Mm. Jess is on Facebook saying beautiful words. Um, Robin, honey, we're not actually doing readings at the moment. We are talking about grief and the process of spirit with what we know from our own experiences with working with spirit and how it works. So for those that did miss out this morning, Ros and I just sort of um, spoke about like Ros's friend that has just passed and his situation, how they as a group of friends pulled together and made a beautiful video for him um, and, you know, passed their messages on that way. But with what I experienced with over my years of working with Spirit, Spirit will sh has shown me that when we pass, we, you know, we cross over, we're usually meant by a loved one or loved ones. It doesn't necessarily just have to be one. It could be multiple people. And we spend mm. time together reconnecting. Um, and then those that were there before that person that is just recently passed over will go back to what they're doing. And then the the soul that has just passed will go into a healing process where they will do the healing on their life. So whether it's from illness, um, tragedy, whatever in their life, and be able to reflect on the lessons they've learned in life and that side of it, and then move on to the next journey, whether it's reincarnation coming back a second time, um, you know, doing whatever it is they need to do. Sometimes they move up into the angeletic world side of it and, you know, that's their their journey done in the way of coming back and forwards as a soul with that side of it. And yes. so, you know, and we spoke about what it's like with somebody illness before their passing where the body and sorry the soul can disconnect from the vessel and start mm -hmm. that preparation before the body actually starts to shut down properly sort of with that so Ros and I'd mm -hmm. love to answer any questions to our best of our not um, our ability I guess is probably the word I'm looking for if you'd like to ask anything around right. you know this mm. side of it um something maybe that you've experienced at the same time but i've just put mm. grabbed a message that caught my eye uh trisha would l uh, love any messages from a loved one especially my dad honey um sorry i didn't actually read that comment before i uh, clicked on it so we're not actually doing messages tonight hun you are very welcome to join in tomorrow night and um, I would certainly love to to share messages with you then with that side of it, but we'd rather keep it more so um, to tonight on the subject, talking about grief and whatnot. So uh, we've got Pam. She says, my daughter was awakened this morning to something hovering over her. She thought it was a nightmare three years to the day and the time, time we received the call of my sister's fire. I think I was my sister's spirit letting her know she was watching over her. Mm. I got yes from that. Did you pick up on anything, Ros? I will just oh, take yes. that down because it's covering yes. your face. Yeah. <laughs> that part I can't <laughs> see in, in the back end of it. But, yeah, yeah. definitely it is it is um, that that care that's being taken to look after your sister, was it, or your daughter. Yeah. Um, now the comment's gone. <laughs> I can't read it. Yeah, but, sorry. Yeah. It was her daughter um, awakened yeah. by her sister's yeah. spirit. Yeah, look, there's there's many instances where you might be receiving those types of messages that hasn't really meant much, but that in that instance um, it was stronger and, and you, you knew that there was something in it really for you to take notice and spirit does certainly give yeah. us the message very clearly when we really need to know it too, I've found over time. So okay. if you don't 
I, I tend to feel sometimes that they like it in threes. If you're not taking notice the first time, you'll get a second one and then a third one. You might get hit with the whammy. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it's great get... that that message was there for you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Exactly. And mm. I love the way, Pam, that you have trusted your instincts mm. with your and gone with your first thoughts because, you know, that's where spirit's taking you. So I want to say when that's your first thought that pops into your head, that is spirit there with that side of um so now the wonderful felicity is reminding me on facebook um that you know if we are suffering with grief there are counselors mm -hmm. and social workers and people out there that can help with that side of it your doctor is one of them as well um flick is just saying people like myself and ros can also be of an assistance as well in that sense and sometimes mm -hmm. just being able to connect you with your loved yeah. one and to be able to give you that clarity that they're okay or what they've experienced and gone through has yeah. you know and that they're at peace can help you as well with that so thank you flick for that reminder mm -hmm. and that you know that is important there's nothing wrong with reaching out and asking for help Okay, so we've got Natasha, she says, a close friend passed away Sunday, so unexpected, made me miss my dad a lot more. Mm. Honey, I send my love and healing. I think um, I did reply to a message that I seen that you sent the other day just after finding out that your your beautiful friend had passed. So my heart goes out to you, hun. And do you know what? It's I think it's quite common for things like this to bring up the emotions of a loved one, the pain, the loss mm -hmm. sort of thing with that side of it. So it's about, to me, I want to say it's about acknowledging that side mm -hmm. of it and how you're feeling. Okay. Yeah. I think too that uh, having it remind you of your father's passing as well that you're missing, um, you can still have your chats with him just as that poem. Yeah spoke of then they're, they're not away from you they are right next to you so in that memory of your dad just use that to just have that chat yeah use, and you know use that energy like for I, that purpose mm, yeah nothing wrong with that's you. it you know there's <laughs> yeah. Just because we can't see the physical, what I call the vessel anymore, it doesn't mean they're not with us. And there may be times that you you sense them, and there may be times that they don't. But I, you know, I put out there this morning um, to you know everybody that joined in and watched that you know look at the amount of times that you will have a memory of a loved one that just pops out of nowhere. You know, that's their mm. soul with you at that very time. Look at the message that they're giving you. Look at what's mm. going on in your life at that time. Natasha's just saying mm. thank you. You're yeah. very welcome, honey. And it's I find especially, yeah, it is. And I find especially following that too, Leanne, the, you, know, you mentioned the perfume of something that reminded you, or yeah. I did, can't remember, yeah, the perfumes yeah. even, or the light touch on a shoulder that feels like the touch they used to give you. Yeah. Something my yeah. dad used to do was tickle at the back of the neck like a camel bite thing <laughs> in a go like that. Uh, sometimes I we feel that. It. So, I yep. mean, it's little things like that. Just bring That's that memory it. forward to the present. And then we yep. do showing even, why. even things like the tickle to the nose, the touching yeah. of the hair, they can do those physical things. You know, mm. I remember when I first started my spiritual journey, my kids were only really young at kindy and I'd sit there playing in my hair. And I think my husband thought I was going crazy because every night he got home from work, I'm touch, touching my hair and I'm like, check, have I got knits? Have the kids bought home knits from kindy <laughs> even though they didn't have it? But it took me a while to realise that was spirit trying to get my attention. They will mm -hmm. do it one way or another. So, you know, it was always, he's going, there's nothing there. I'm sick of looking in your hair. <laughs> was that three times you got asked? <laughs> I reckon him. it was probably multiples. <laughs> in it just yeah. seemed to be every day sort of yeah. thing. I don't know if it was just coincidence. It was the days the kids had gone to kindy or my oldest one was in kindy. 
But it, mm. well, I guess she was going four days a week back then. But it was yes. just constant, and they got my attention. Now I sit in the lounge and I'll be watching telly, or I'm on the computer on my knee, and they'll go. They, I'll get that tickle of the head, and I'm going, "Get out! Leave my hair alone! <laughs> <laughs> I know you're there. Come back tomorrow when I'm working." Yeah. Sort of thing. Ah, <laughs> yes. And that's something too. If it really isn't the right time, you can ask them to leave. Mm -hmm. We need to be reminded of that. We don't have to put up with the interruptions to what is our life if we don't want to. We do have some level of control over that. Oh, that's it. You agree? And, you know, <laughs> oh, definitely. I've got to tell you a story about that. My my husband's uncle passed. He'd had cancer for years. And I think it was within the first week of his passing, we're laying in bed and I said to my husband, oh, your uncle's coming through and he's acknowledging this and this. My husband rolled over to me and he says, tell him to bugger off. He had his own woman in bed. This is my day. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't sensed his, husband, his uncle come back since then. <laughs> Oh, that is funny. <laughs> it is. And my husband can be a bit sceptical at times. And for him just to come out and with that and the way it rolled off the tongue, <laughs> I just about wet myself laughing. I'm like, Paul, some respect, please. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. We do yeah, need to it, show some respect, I think. But, do. yeah, it's still yeah. funny. But, <laughs> but it's just, yeah, it's just you know my husband. So you can, uh -huh. you can understand where he comes from with that side of it. Um, but, you know, I set my boundaries on my bedroom because for years I got woken up at night by a spirit. So I allow spirits to come to the door. They can stand there. They mm. can wait until morning. If they do come in, it's kind of like for me that I need to take attention and take notice. It is an urgent message. But I've mm. set up that respect. I've set up those boundaries with spirit. You know, if the sun's down, I'm not working unless I choose to. And then, mm. you know, they come back while the sun's up. Mind you, they can be there at 7 a.m. as the sun's breaking through the window. But, mm. uh, yeah, it's you know, it is about setting boundaries and whatnot as mm. well with that. Um, um, yes. I'm still learning that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It all yeah. comes over time. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a message from here, Lashana Denise. Uh, hello, curious to know if you can tell me whose spirit has been moving things through my home, please. All right, honey. Um, I get the older male with that side of it. So I do feel you, there's an older male in your home. I want to say look at mum's side of the family. Yeah, uh, Natasha the says she side, gets, yeah. That was yeah. the female side I was feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Um, Natasha says, oh, I get the tingle to the nose. And, mm. you know, that's signs from spirit. They will do all sorts. I've had literally... Uh, when one of my customers, uh, like my client, wasn't listening on a phone reading, the whole cupboard exploded. Every ca everything came flying out of that cupboard. So they will get your attention one way or another um, with mm. that. So uh, I, was, my yes, I was just wondering oh. with the, the previous one, as far as the things being moved around, um, yep. is it anything specific that's meaningful to her as far as the actual items go? for reminding, reminding her that's who it might be that's moving him too. So that's just yeah. an idea. Is it, mm. is it a photo or, you know, it could be something that belonged to a loved one or something that has significance around a loved one sort of thing, thing with each that? Time or something different each time too. So, yeah, just what came yeah. to mind. Mm. Yeah, and that's it. And it's just trusting that stuff mm. as well with that, okay? Um, Flix just say, Mum's Mum hopes I enjoyed my spa. I did, thanks, honey. Please thank Mum. <laughs> I ended up at Flix this afternoon and had a spa. It was beautiful to loosen up the, the mm. muscles a little bit with that side of it. Uh, mm. Alison says on Facebook, my son said he saw a shadow the other day. Can you see who it would be? Are you picking up anything on that, Ros? For Alison holding. Um. Not as no 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 uh, um, not as far as a name goes. I think it's just someone who was. It, it just feels like it was someone running through. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it feels like to me. It's just yeah. someone running through, wanting uh, almost is is the child um, ready to see has been mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's where I was being drawn to. So, Alison, I don't think it was anybody in particular, but I do feel that your son is intuitive. Now, kids are Mm -hmm. very intuitive from the age of birth right through Mm -hmm. to around 10 to 12, most kids start to lose it sort of thing in that side of it. So I just feel that he was picking up on energy in general with that. So, Mm -hmm. all right, Hannah. Um, And when your kids are intuitive and they pick up on that stuff, let them know it's okay to do. And I will, we might actually do another, a night where we talk about intuitive children. I'm actually planning on Mm -hmm. putting a game together a couple hour workshop to help parents um with intuitive children as well and how to deal with that and how to help them with that um that's right Alison your son's now 16 that's fine because some kids keep it some don't mm. so with that mm. so Alishana says it was a $20 note that flipped over right in front of her eyes I love it I love the physical <laughs> side of spirit yeah. sort of yeah. thing so um I love going ghost hunting <laughs> <laughs> It's great. Oh, it's nice, so. nice ghosts around here too. <laughs> <laughs> as far as That's it. So, um, yeah. excellent. So we've got plenty of co- um, comments coming through on Facebook, but unfortunately I can't um, okay. share them uh, on the page yeah. because it is through um be live and that's just a cross post type of thing with that side of it so guys i am getting a lot of messages on my facebook page asking for readings or is such and such around me so if we can sort of uh keep it more to the point on the subject of grief and what happens with spirit um Mm. It would be, you know, this is why we're dedicating this hour tonight and we will do readings and other stuff. And Jess says she'd be very interested in the Intuitive Children's Workshop with that. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, okay, Felicity is just reminding me, if you'd love to join us for a ghost tour through the Royal Adelaide Hospital, the old hospital, we Mm -hmm. are organising a night where we can hopefully have a group of maximum of I think it's 20 people um, where we just make it a private group too so you can certainly inbox us on Facebook for more details on that I am hoping to book a a date in the next couple of days for that side of it as well so it'll be probably early September at this stage um, because I know that side of it will close down shortly because they won't um, be allowed to have access to the hospital for much longer with that so is there anything you'd like to touch on at the moment before I sort of bring up the next subject? Um, no, not really along the line of what we've been chatting about. I think I think probably just a bit of a reminder of the, the fact that, uh, you know, with the soul contract side of what our life experience is, uh, I think it's it's the reminder that we have actually put time on the other side, which I consider to be our home, Um, we have put time there into actually working out what we need in this lifetime here so that we can actually trust what experiences we're having are meant to be for us to learn and grow in what our life path is through the eons or ages that we've got um, to learn that. Uh, Like you said, Leanne, you know, once we've actually moved through what we need to learn, we we, probably, I mean, I belief quite deeply that we are actually um, moved along a process of helping others by being in the angelic realm then in various roles so yeah um, you know so it's it's the confidence that we can actually have that we have planned to be here it's not negative nothing is negative it's all for the purpose of being a positive moving forwards in whatever is our karmic path so and that journey we've got hmm. And that's I think it. That's what and I'd like to add to finish that yeah. area of it off. Yeah. 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 And I might so, go a little bit more into detail with that mm. because um hang a dare. Um, the lady, uh, for those that weren't joined, uh, didn't get a chance to join in with us this morning, we spoke about how when we come into this life, it's kind of like we've got that life contract already set out in front of mm-hmm. us, okay? With my understanding, what I understand about contra- um, soul contracts, and I, I haven't gone that deeply into it, but I can only also go by what Spirit has shown me over the years as well. So with my understanding, um, when, the, uh, say, we've got pregnancy, 
the soul enters the body, the baby just before birth and then you know it grows from there and we come into this journey with three different dates with what I understand okay so you know one of those dates is our end date so to speak and we have already chosen that before we begin this life, this journey. So whether we, you know, we opt, I don't know why Spirit saying opt out, we, we choose to leave on that first day. I love the way they, they step in and take over at times. Um, mm. We, you know, whether we choose to leave on that first day or the second or the third, if it's the third date, the other two may have been near misses or the potential for that time to be quite tragic in the way that we could have left sort of things. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got that chosen out. We don't necessarily know until the end. You know, I've had mm -hmm. somebody tell me that they know they're not meant to be here much longer sort of thing and she, she was adamant she knew when her time was up. You know, I couldn't and, – and that made me – go look at her life in another way and I got the reference to it was a feeling that this was her last time here. She was moving up into that angelic world, sort of into that level type of it. So we'll travel mm. our life. We will do those things that are set out. We may vary a little bit on that journey from time to time, but we usually come back on track um, sort of thing and everything happens for a reason. We've got lessons to learn and if we don't learn them in this lifetime, we will come mm. back to learn them again. And a good friend of mine and uh, Roz's, um, I was at a workshop with her a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and she was told, if you don't learn the lesson in this life, you're coming back to do it. She's like, oh, hell no, I'm learning them this time because <laughs> I'm not coming back. You know exactly who I'm yes. talking about to me, <laughs> Roz, with that laugh. She was determined this is it. This is, She doesn't mm. need to be here again after this lifetime. Sometimes we just know those things. Um, or she's just being stubborn, one of the two. <laughs> Sometimes we just know those things. That's it. <laughs> so I have heard and it before with you. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure that I will get a message tomorrow going, hoy, <laughs> sort of thing <laughs> happened last time. I, mean, I mentioned her within a couple hours I got the message. <laughs> I'm going to love her. But, yes. you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. it. And so mm. if we don't learn it, we will come back and we will do it over and over. We may be doing it in the, like in your life now. I'm going to say look at mm. the things that keep repeating themselves to you. The, each situation may be a little bit different, but the lesson is mm. the same pretty much, mm. whether it's, you know, in and out of relationships that have the very similar outcome yeah. sort of thing. There could be different things, um, people taking advantage of you in different ways, but the, the lesson itself is still the, very much the same. So I want to say look at what's going on in that side of it. Mm. And, you know, as we get to the other end of our life and we do leave, whether it's tragically, you know, here one moment, gone the next, as Spirit puts it to me, um, or it's dying from sickness, illness, that side of old age, just body shuts down. We, you know, with what I get shown quite often from somebody um, that has passed in an accident, they can go into a little bit of shock. They stand back and they look at the accident scene and watch the in investigation and all that side of it go on. Mm -hmm. And it may take some of them a little bit of time to realise that they have passed. Mm -hmm. They kind of feel like they're just watching a movie or something like that. That's the way I see it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, others that are ill can start to separate from their body earlier, sort of thing from the vessel so to speak because it and with what I have experienced in my own family it can happen for up to a couple of weeks prior with that and they start to spend more time the soul separated from the vessel and they stand mm -hmm. back they stay close to uh, like I said this morning they stay close to their family they'll be within the room and Roz you may have experienced that with mum and dad because mm -hmm. both of them were sort of ill prior to their passing but sometimes we can feel that other times we may not yeah. because that soul may separate in those last moments sort of thing yeah I had the sense of it uh, probably more so with mum because I was there uh, for most of the time up until because she was in hospital and I was sitting with her for most of the time and there was a sense that she had left leaving uh, and I knew I didn't need to be there when she actually did pass so um yeah. that was my sense of it in that instance 
Yeah. Yeah. So by memory, Ros, I think there was a couple of times that we had conversations and just things that mum was saying to you in the lead up mm. to those last yeah. couple of months that sort of, you know, gave the opinion that mm. she was ready to go. She was starting to oh, make yes. that transition in that side yes. of it. And, yeah. you know, it, it's the same with um, dementia um, patients as well. They seem to, even though they may have dementia for two or three years or a longer period of time, no matter how quick it is, the more that dementia sets in, it's kind of like that soul separates and spends more time on the other side than they do here with the physical the vessel sort of thing with that so if you've got a loved one that is suffering with dementia um, and they are spending more time out of it than they are having the clarity that's their mm. spirit already stepping over to the other side but they don't completely detach until the the vessel is finished and closed down sort of thing and uh, julie hughes is just saying hi leanne my auntie passed last week is she okay honey i do get yes with that and i got a beautiful smile from her at the same time reading that and yeah. that is another thing that we spoke about this morning Roz, um yeah. is also about how you know spirit can communicate with us afterwards after mm. their passing some people may take or some spirits may take a little while to to be able to communicate because they need to heal. They, their energy is quite weak because it does take energy. And as hmm. Ros knows herself, you know, they can pull on their energy. It, it's quite exhausting for a medium to hmm. connect with spirit, especially over, I guess, long periods of time as well with that. But some spirits will take a while. Some can connect quite quickly. How soon do you reckon you felt your loved ones? Well, you spoke this morning about your friend that passed a week or so ago. Oh, um, yes, uh, with Roland, it, it was pretty much uh, as we were doing and I just sensed I could see in the face of one of the other participants in that live stream of um, Get Well Soon that um, it, it probably wasn't going to be that he'd already passed. It was just my sense yeah. of it. And then as we finished, there were the, the two photos of the owl um, with the flight, you know, streamlined and then the yeah. wing. Um, as I say, as a hi, I'm still here. It's, I think with, um, look, it was just different with each. It's, it's something that sometimes is flashing and you're sort of uncertain, oh, was that or not? Was Dad sitting there or not? Or, you know, that sort of a, an instant flash or the feeling yeah. like I said as far as the tickle neck <laughs> and that sort yeah. of thing. Um, look, honestly, it, uh, I think as, as a timeline, I don't actually remember how soon after he'd passed that I was getting those impressions. I think it was within the month and then it's just lessened mm -hmm. off and it's just memories more so that bring that thought and, and comfort actually that, uh, yeah. you know, it's not the end of who they are. Uh, Mum, I, you know, that's different again as well. That just seems to be all over the place because I'm still living here with that more present presence of caring for her here in this home. Um, yeah. Ron, that was interesting, um, you know, to, to feel that from someone I've never actually physically met before but had a very big influence on, yeah. on how I felt about it, uh, you know, the deep discussions we'd had. So yeah, it, and yeah. that was over a period of years too, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah, just... a couple of years, yeah, a few, yeah. One, uh, three, or, three or four. I know it was when I was back way back doing hangouts on air with Google Plus. Um, yeah. It's still going, but in different form. YouTube, <laughs> in whatever way that is. <laughs> uh, I'll get back to there too. <laughs> so yeah. 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 yeah, excellent. We just got Mandy D. Oh, I'm just looking at the Facebook messages that are coming through, yeah. and my yeah. feed is going so fast, guys. So I apologize if I don't get to see your message. We will go back later and have a look at the messages mm. today or tomorrow. Mandy D just says, Lost a friend on Monday. Want to know that she's around me. And I get yes, honey. I actually yeah. feel that she tickles your cheek at times. There was a couple mm. of comments where people have commented about. Uh, one was um, she felt her dad's soul leave her leave his body and it wasn't long after that that his breathing started to deteriorate and he passed with that. Jackie, yes, I get your brother is okay, hun, yeah. um, with that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, hun, were you going to say something? 
Yeah, look, in shamanic practices, um, there is process that can be put into place to actually help the soul disconnect from the body and create a smoother transition. Um, mm -hmm. It's an area where I haven't done the full-on training for it, but I, I do know that you can, it can be done and um, I just can't remember what the name is for it now, but it's a process that you do actually help those who pass. And uh, yeah. it's it can be using various instruments and tools or it can just be singing them through the transition yeah. or toning or whatever. There's so ways of Reiki. doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Some people use even Reiki just putting, to Even just putting that energy into helping that soul disconnect is a wonderful way of loving them through it uh, and helping with that uh, process. Yeah. You don't have to have the formal training to help. You don't. You just trust your gut, mm. you, you gut instinct, your intuition. We just got a message mm. here that's caught my eye from um, Teresa. My dad has communicated with uh, psychics or mediums when a family member has seen them with messages uh, messages about me, but never when I have seen one. It makes me doubt if he's sending me messages or it's me hoping. The thing is, Teresa, we can also, and this goes for everybody, we can also block stuff from from spirit there can be times that we want it so badly that our grief can block the signs whether you know signs from spirit can be the tickles the touching the feathers the penny what they used to call pennies um, the messages through music whatever catches your attention mm -hmm. so sometimes mm -hmm. the fact that we will it to happen may not happen the other thing is to keep in mind hun when you go and see a medium or a psychic i suggest to anybody that asks me how to prepare for a reading all you need to do is go in with an open heart and be open to any messages that come through because for myself and i'm sure ros does the same thing i set my intentions with what i call my team uh, my spiritual team to give you what you need today and to be able to move forward. When you come in and you want to hear exactly what you've got in your mind, I've had clients that sit here and go, nope, I want to hear this, this and this. They will argue mm. black and blue that you've got to prove that you have my loved one because I've said you say this, you do this, you do that. It doesn't work that way. Spirit is in control. We are just the communicator. Mm. So it's going in with an open heart and being open to anything that they want to tell you because we can't change the message. Mm -hmm. So, Teresa, in that sense, you may be expecting a certain thing but not getting that or Dad is communicating with others to pass the message on. Maybe the, the grief is still too much or the emotions are too much for yourself or for him. Because I, I work as an empath. I feel the emotions that come through from spirit. I can sit and cry through a reading, but they aren't my tears. They're spirits. Okay, Hunter? So I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I'm just saying that is quite possible what can be happening as well with that side of um. Okay. And, and so, I think, too, that the different ways that some of the mediums actually receive their messages and how they receive them, being so different because each one of us is an individual in how we receive what we're given that uh, for me sometimes it's just that the information's flowing past so much like a, a movie sped up to four or five times or probably even 20. Yeah. You can't always pick up every little nuance of the message. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's you know, um, not misinterpretation, but it, it's the, the skill of picking up some of what's needed to be passed on isn't yeah. always fast enough. And so That's it. It's like looking at my news feed at the moment, just going doing, 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 yeah. doing, doing. Constantly. Yeah. You start to read the comment and then it's gone, it's off the screen. Mm -hmm. Natasha just says, if people think they have the gift, how do they learn how to use it? So, Natasha, mm -hmm. that's a really good question, hun, because um, I always forget forget about that side of stuff as well but basically what I recommend is pick up books do workshops do the things that you're drawn to we constantly learn and 
I do mentor people and I don't think there's a right or a wrong way because we all work very differently. Um, you could go to somebody like myself uh, that does mentor or another teacher. We can give you the tools to help you work out how you work and how you make the connection and help you understand that side of it and strengthen that sort of thing. So we've all got the, I don't know how you feel about this, Ros, but I think we've all got the ability. It's yeah. just about honing it in understanding it and knowing how they work and strengthening and working exactly. on that i think and that's exactly right it's it's um following a guidance like it's it's almost like all the tools are there just in a pile and you get told you know you've got to work out how to do something without instructions um yeah there are times where we just need to have that little bit of a road map or the ticking the boxes, look, grab this A to put with that B. Sometimes it's as simple as that as actually doing it like that. It's going to be different yeah. how you learn um, and it'll be relevant for you as to that process. So the guidance, what, take, what takes your notice, what, what spirit's actually yeah. showing you, and it could be the book title that is, sitting out real bold on the shelf uh, ask That's your inner it. self is that the one i'm supposed to read if you get that feeling yeah i will grab it and go with it yeah yeah, things yeah. Like and that. flick's just oh, thanks flick <laughs> flick is one of the beautiful members of my team and uh, she has just reminded or put up on facebook that uh, i am running an on eight week online course to yeah. teach mediumship yeah. and psychic that starts uh, i think it's the 11th of september it's on every week for about an hour, hour and a half on a Tuesday night. But if you do want some information on that, you can certainly go to my um, Facebook page. I have, don't think I have on my website at the moment. Um, Flick, that's another job we need to do, hun. Um, to And go into the events section and you can certainly inbox and ask for details. It is going to be a small group so I can spend more time one-on-one -on -one with people. And I'm pretty sure, I haven't checked today, but last night there was four positions still left with that so terry's just right. saying that all makes sense excellent thanks flick for Hi, the terry. reminder and so um beautiful oh wow there's so many messages through facebook mm. it's it's incredible i should have <laughs> probably booked should have had the link facebook. To the yeah well uh, we're yeah. learning as we um, go with the technology too and the platforms and we're it. using yeah. Mm. And Sammy so. says that she's super interested. Beautiful, honey. So inbox me and I can certainly yeah. um, help you with that side of it. Yeah. So it's, it's um, certainly the, pe the people that you're attracted to and it takes your interest. There's no harm in following yeah. it up. And That's take it. from everything that you're learning what you need for yourself because what you don't need for you will just drop away anyway. Yeah. You won't remember. Exactly. That's how I treat a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I haven't remembered it, it's not for me. <laughs> but yeah. also, yeah. Roz, I find uh, oh, somebody just says Be Live isn't working for them. Alicia, oh. okay, honey, I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, this is, you're looking at it on my Facebook page, which is actually a um, cross post with that side of it. Was so the, what's not... the link with that post to come over to the My Time Live TV? Uh, probably not. <laughs> okay. No, that's all right. I, I think I'm on one of them, but I didn't test yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I think you did actually. I didn't think about that side of it. Yep. But um, but see, we we all go through life. We have experiences, and I've mm. found over the years, uh, in the way I work, spirit will pull on, on my experiences, my memories, mm. my what I call my references in my life experience mm -hmm. with what I have had um, to use a signage sort of thing. So, you know, it's it's just knowing what that sign means to you, what that sort of how that resonates with you and working that out, you know, whether you're psychic or you're medium, mm -hmm. um, there is a difference between the two. The medium connects with those that are passed over. The psychic is more about future and guidance sort of side of it. And I do work in both areas. Um, and, Rods, what would you say you work as a bit of both? Uh, well, it is a bit of both. Um, I think I'm probably just more open to to what is coming in and 
there's sometimes where I know definitely for sure that it is uh, a a physical being that I'm connecting with that is for somebody as a past soul compared to just yeah. receiving from spirit what is well messages and and I think really my emphasis is more rather than future I don't try to interpret whether it's future or anything I, I take the whole lot as being uh, guidance for that person in their journey where they're at at the moment so as you do too with what we're given yeah it's for that moment in time for what's going to help them through their next steps forward in understanding or in actual direction what might be the next step for career, you know, relationships or whatever. It's what's being experienced in that moment in time. Isn't that what most people are interested in, getting through the now? Because we live yeah. in the now. Yeah, some people I find also are needing to heal the past Oh, find yeah. that peace in the past to be able to let go mm. sort of thing as well. But, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It It is, in, and that's where I set my intentions to mm. um, give you what you need for now and to move mm. forward sort of thing mm. with that side of it. I just got a message mm. here from Pamela. I keep forgetting to put them up. She, <laughs> I'm going between Facebook and the two screens. But Pamela just yes. says, I felt... Um, I feel sister's soul had left her body a week prior to her passing. She suffered so much. I didn't feel that um, I didn't feel the need to be at the hospital until the day she passed. Mm -hmm. And you know mm -hmm. what? I think that's fine, Pam, because I think mm -hmm. we do what we need to do, sort of thing. In that sense, I'll just take that down. Um, and like I said earlier uh, today, when we spoke about it, spirit can leave the body earlier like as Pam saying she felt the week prior even though the body right up to the last moment can go through all the motions the sounds the movements um that side of it that soul can already be left spirit will quite often show me for those that have illness and have a lot of pain that the soul separated and was able to let go of the pain before their passing so when they pass mm. they do pass very peacefully with mm. that but unfortunately for us that are left behind and do witness that side of it do see the body go through what seems like a pain process in that way mm. but I guess if you know you can take anything from that a lot of the time if you've felt that soul leave or you feel that that vessel feels different to you that soul has more than likely separated mm. and they've let go of that pain mm. so she says think, that makes a whole lot of sense beautiful oh, yeah 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 uh, and yeah. i think too sometimes that is the experience of that physical body that's actually fully resting without any intervention from the the soul it's it's healing because there are those that do re-enter back into their body because uh, that connection like the near-death experiences that you hear reported sometimes and I know one of the healing modalities mm. that I've trained in was purely because um, the lady who received it as part of what she was getting from spirit had received it as a result she had two near-death experiences where she knew she was dead and on the other side experiencing this learning before she came back into her physical body to then yeah. teach that further. That's the way that spirit or that she'd organised as part of a soul contract. Um, there's many stories of near-death experiences where that's experienced and they come back having that purpose reinforced for yeah. what they're meant to be doing here and they do go ahead um, with yeah. wonderful lives. Um, but they've yeah. died, yeah. come back. Yeah. You know, like there's those experiences exactly. too. Mm. We've had to feel that. Samantha just says, mm. loving the chat tonight. Are you, um, I'm pleased you're enjoying it, honey. And, yeah. you know, I'd love to have more nights where we don't focus occasionally on more mm. the reading side of it. And we help people understand this stuff because there's so many different elements to what we do. Mm. Trisha just says, um, and I think we could both answer this, Roz, and if you want to go first, you can. Did you find it scary at first with spirit and oh. setting your boundaries? Look, honest, the, the first time ever where I was messing around, and it really was messing around, was uh, an experience as seance when I was 14 or 15 or something around that age and um, 
I suppose it was me that was interested in doing this stuff because even then I sort of knew there was something different about me in that respect, wanting to connect with spirits. So I'd play around with the seance and the Ouija board, not knowing a thing about mm -hmm. it really besides what I'd seen in movies and the rest, a group of girls <laughs> with their hands on it and it was doing its right thing and all the rest. And it was a local entity that we knew had passed and not previous influence. It was working. I knew we connected. <laughs> um, and the scare when, I mean, there was one of the blokes who'd been outside the window, fingers down the fly screen and, oh, God, help, scare the... <laughs> oh, the up. noise. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was scattered, like a chalkboard. So it, it was scary in that instance because we didn't know what we were doing, didn't understand it fully, and I was just going, help, leather, we've guided these other girls yeah. in this group, you know, so around similar ages, my sisters and a few friends around a kitchen table and um, it was a bit of a no-no but it certainly kept me in the knowledge I think that it is something to be wary of at least knowing what you're doing before you go into it even if it's just ask questions and yep. uh, you know as far as reading cards being aware that anything that you're using is a tool when it's something like that the, with the mm. proper with the knowledge that it's not going to do any, uh, I mean, I've got to be careful here because I don't know everything. Sometimes you can sound like you know everything and it's not true. <laughs> We're all always learning and being open and aware and having those awarenesses of the protection and setting the boundaries. It was then that I did start setting boundaries around myself with what I was getting and probably why it took so many years for me to actually reopen that door. I would yep. say, so, but this I think time with a bit more learning yeah. behind it, <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of understanding. <laughs> that's yes. it, and I, I think that's what a lot of us will find when we start to un like go yeah. out and do the workshops and stuff, and start to understand how spirit does work. A lot of mm. us have got those abilities and been sensing stuff for a long time, but I guess mm. um, for me, yes, it did scare the crap out of me a few times. Um, I seem to. I guess as a child I always had that ability and seen things and had a really good imagination. I just thought it was what others sort of picked up on. But for me it wasn't until I was in my mid to late 20s when I was pregnant with my first daughter that things really started to come to head because mine was more at night. I don't know if it was just that I was more exhausted at night working, being heavily pregnant um, and then going into such a deep sleep that I was more open to the information coming through. But my husband, I think he would have had me committed several times over if he had his choice. Um, I would wake him up through the middle of the night, getting him up to go around and check the the windows are all shut and locked and the doors are locked because somebody would be standing beside my bed and that he thought I was dreaming or sleep talking. And that's another thing. I I I claim that because as a child I would sleepwalk, I would sleep talk, and I swear it was spirit. I don't know how many times I wake up in the morning with an egg to my head because I tried to walk through a hard wall, that sort of thing, and I'm sure I was trying to, to you know, follow spirit in that sense because they would come out of the walls, as Flick mm. saying that scared the shit out of her, or the crap out of her, because mm. she had teddy, her teddy bear running around the house. But, you know, I got <laughs> woken up with... And, and it's it is funny, but we can laugh at that because we know what those experiences are like. But mm. um, I quite often got woken up with spirit very much in my face, very full on, um, very real in that sense. I remember one day waking up with a lady standing beside my bed. Now I I interpreted it to her being in the eighteen hundreds with the big frilly neck mm. and the big gown sort of thing like they would wear back then. Mm. Under one arm she had a dark baby that was naked under the other arm she had her head so I could see the outfit and stuff but just no head and then I noticed it was under her arm so my feeling was now looking back more than likely she had um, had experiences with whether it was a slave or somebody that she shouldn't have had and she was beheaded for those actions sort of thing and the child was obviously killed her as well with that but 
you know, it seems so real. And I'm like, my husband's going, you're, you're asleep, you, you know, you're, you're sleep talking. I'm like, no, I'm awake. I'm talking to you. I'm answering your questions. I'm looking at you. And, you know, it just grew from there sort of thing. But, it, you know, it was like a certain point in my life, it becomes so much obvious and came through in a different way. So, yeah, it did scare me. I was lucky to have a beautiful friend that understood this side of things a lot better and encouraged me to speak to him. And when I did, it was a totally different story and it hasn't looked back from then. So it just yeah. keeps growing. I think once um, there's the acknowledgement of self in that space where, yeah. you know, yes, it, it, is it a gift? Well, yes, it is, but it's also something that everybody's got. So, you know, it's the ability. So Yeah, um, that's it. Yes. Right. Rachel's mm. just saying, hey, ladies, I believe someone is attempting to work with spirit to undermine me. Will it be a long process before I move past this issue? Honey, um, protect your energy, okay? You can put a mirror between yourself, and this can work for anybody. Mm. Put a mirror between yourself in your mind, um, between you and them, so the mirror faces away from you, so they get a reflection of what they are pushing on to you, yeah. okay? When you protect your energy and you don't give them the power to do that, that can stop that. Oh. You can cut it off dead in, dead in I'm tracks. I'm not sure What's if Leanne has dropped out. I've frozen. In the I'm... <laughs> okay, I'm still here, um, Roz. Because I'm not one of the lives. Okay. Do I keep talking or not? I can but hear I'll, you, Roz. Can others hear me? To see if I can pick up the live. Here. Yep. And okay. No. Oh. Can if somebody could just type if and let me know if they can hear me. A message. No, I can't even see a message because <laughs> I'm at the back end of it. Better Let's go back to where I'm Beautiful. Okay, um, protection. Yes, we can hear you both. Okay, excellent. Well, I'll keep talking. Can you hear me now, Roz? Yep. Well, energy is okay. working really well in the background here. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, no, it's funny. Feed anywhere. I can't uh, see okay, me. maybe can refresh, Roz. Are there? Yep. Am I talking over <laughs> again there, Terry? I can see your comment. Uh, Roz is just messaging me. I'll just let her know. I can hear. Can hear you. Just stay quiet while he ends there because I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, I love it, and I love the way that happened. Just when we were answering your question, Honey, and saying about being able to um, to protect you and stop that energy from happening. Uh, when they do that, it's it's not coming from the heart. So when we work with spirit, oh, I'm going we to are supposed to out and refresh purely okay, because I'm... of the I can't receive anything. I know you can hear and see me, so I'll just can you drop <laughs> me down into the lobby? Yep. The end, so I can actually refresh the screen. Okay. There you go, Roz. Excellent. Um when we do this work, it's got to come from heart, okay? The egos can step in and this is all part and parcel of the teaching sort of side of stuff that we learn through um, our development and stuff like that. But as long as we do the work, it's coming from the heart, it's not coming out of ego or um, personal growth and stuff like that, it's, you know, it's the right thing. When you get somebody like that, hun, that is putting, working against you with spirit, that to me is more black witchcraft side of it with that i'll just bring Roz back up into the screen and see if she can hear us now that she has refreshed how's that honey yes i can see yeah, you again. Back. i was just about to type in the team chat i love the timing of that question <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, everybody can still hear us. So uh, Rachel's yeah, yeah. just saying thank you for that. So I was just explaining to Rachel that, um, you know, when we do this work, it's got to come from the heart. Those that are doing it more from that negative or that dark energy is probably the way to put it, aren't doing it for the right reasons, and that's probably where they will bring a lot of stuff on themselves in that sense. But if you block it, send that reflection back to them you're not going to take it on in your own way you give them a dose of their own um their own side of it as well yeah, the energy, just before the i thrown back mm -hmm. 
yeah, that's it. Just before I forget, guys, because I've gotten to mention share the videos um, and invite your <laughs> friends and family. If you know somebody that is grieving or um, finding things very tough at the moment after the passing mm. of a loved one, please tag them in the comments and make them aware of this. This may be something that may resonate with them. And if we can help anybody in the slightest way, um, you know, it only needs to affect one person and a job is done in that sense. Yeah. But I'd love you also to put, because I know we're nearly at, well, we've gone over time again, <laughs> which run, it goes, the hour goes so quick, we could talk for two hours. But mm. um, I'd love you to put in the comments where you're from so we get an idea mm. also of how far our audience is going and, you know, how, how much we can sort of uh, share the messages as well. And Casey's just saying she's got goosebumps. Beautiful, honey. Sometimes goosebumps can be from spirit stepping in really close too as well mm. or just confirmation in what we do. But, like cool um, going past. <laughs> yeah, I feel that sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it when you walk into a room and you feel the temperature or the thickness of the air change. And usually mm. that is spirit around that yeah, as presence. well. With um, mm. So Sammy's just saying, uh, is my dad around us? Is he okay? It's his anniversary next week and also my mum's mm. birthday and Father's Day. Honey, I do get he is very much around you. I get a cheeky mm. energy with him as well julie's just saying she's from riverton uh, we had somebody comment from adelaide yes. well new south wales south coast of new south wales um uh, chingen um i know i've said that wrong united states beautiful michigan oh yeah yeah michigan michigan, the michigan. Yeah. <laughs> i knew I'll as soon as i said it, i said it wrong <laughs> california I've just, well, yeah. I've just worked out at the last end to have a separate tab open and just turn the volume off and I can monitor switching between two screens ah, rather than yeah. uh, tabs rather than having two computer monitors, which I don't have available at yeah. the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, oh, it's good yeah. having the second one. I finally worked Next it out. Week. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow <laughs> night I might actually try and use a cam another camera and go into yeah. um, broadcasting onto another page at the same time. Just getting technical, we're playing. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. The learning, learning out loud. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're doing a lot of that lately. Yeah. Um, beautiful. All right. Balaclava, yeah. beautiful. Out in the, pretty much the sticks. <laughs> I love it. Almost. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's You're getting out that door, way. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. My, um, my husband likes the racetrack out there. We haven't been there for years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I sort of drive. The first day me on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I guess, oh, look, you might know this one. Terry from oh, Manangi. Terry, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Terry hey, Terry. Beautiful. <laughs> Your hometown, honey. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. All I right, like guys, it. well, we might, uh, yeah, love mm -hmm. it. We might leave it there. But if you would like to or you're interested in taking up or looking into the workshop on learning how this side of stuff um, for yourself works from the beginner, um, sorry, the mediumship or the psychic, certainly check mm. out my events page on my Facebook. Um, the workshop is up there and it's an eight-week course. Off the top of my head, I think it's like $199 for the two, uh, for the eight weeks with that side of it. Um, Pam is just saying thank you. So is Sammy. Um, oh, lovely. Sammy, just inbox me, honey, or have a look. By paying your fifty dollar deposit, you are securing your place in that workshop, and then emails will go out on the information and stuff from that. Um, certainly, feel free to check out my website or my Facebook page, Roz. Roz's Roz. Do you want to tell us your page name, honey, so people uh, can find you? Well, the page name that I am growing now is Hypnosis Plus, and it's the one with the plus first and then the word plus with Roz, so it's hypnosis plus with Roz. Um, yeah, life changes sometimes give us a fresh breath of air and wanting to change things around, so that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hypnosis plus with Roz or Roz Boundy. Yeah. It doesn't really yeah. matter. There's the link there somewhere on the tabs on the left, left that way. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So. And Terry's just saying, Ros, oh, you yeah. need to catch up soon. So through Terry. <laughs> 
such a big town. <laughs> no, <we do>. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, and Felicity yeah. has put up my website, Leanne Winston Psychic Medium dot com. Honey, you've spelled it medium typo. <laughs> We're it. there. Yeah, well, so my thing, website's not okay. quite working properly yet. I've got to work on that. That part of technology I haven't quite fixed yet. It's working sort of progress went down, but yeah, there's a bit of work in progress. It'll all develop and grow as it's meant to at the right time. <laughs> I need to put and you'll you in know touch about with my it. mate. <laughs> That's it. I need to put you in touch with my mate Nick. He works wonders with websites. Yeah. And Charlie's That's, just saying, hey, ladies. Yeah. Roland yeah. was Beautiful. a. Roland was a man who was actually helping yeah. me with some of that too. So that's why he is sadly missed, not just because of what I'm not getting help with. It's it's just the <laughs> whole thing. We can miss we, those we love so much, but they're still with us. So, yeah. so I mean, that's yeah, a part of it. They, they're still with us. Yeah, mm. just close your eyes, clear your mind, take a deep breath and allow yourself to mm. feel their energy with you. Yeah. Um, when we let go of that brain chatter, it's amazing yes. what we can have come through. We can all do it. All right, Absolutely. on that note, we're going to leave you with that, sending love and healing mm. to those that need it. And uh, good evening, good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you wherever are in are. the world. <laughs> Excellent. And you can catch me tomorrow night on live uh, at 8.30 doing okay. readings. Mm, All right. And be watching. Roz and I are back Tuesday morning <laughs> at 10.30. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Every yes. Tuesday morning for intuitive Tuesday chat. Intuitive chat. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Good night, all. Bye. Bye.